what's up guys this is part two of a two-parter video that i did with elena if you guys want to check out part one first then part two will probably make a little bit more sense because we looked at some pictures in part one it was also funny and you got to meet her and kind of hear her coming out story so highly recommend checking that out before but otherwise enjoy much longer part two We have so much more representation in what you're yes. able to wear, how you're able to express yourself that like, if you don't want to be hyper feminine, there's not one other option. You can like dress like a tomboy or, you know, you can wear a t-shirt and jeans, you can wear whatever you want. It's funny that you're saying that because after like junior high, when we kind of hit mm -hmm. high school time, then I swung hyper feminine. Really? That's my next photo. Let me just send you a That's these are so like interesting. A couple of my kind of like from high school, like who I was. Oh my god, yeah. Oh, the Justin Bieber one. <laughs> yep, that's grad. Stop. <laughs> it's hard to leave with you still on my mind. Photoshop my face onto your body and then Photoshop in like Megan Fox instead of Justin. <laughs> Say your face on Justin Bieber's body. It's <laughs> like that's so much easier. <laughs> Were you comfortable expressing yourself this way, or was it like a thing where you felt like you needed to because of just pressures? I know you said you grew up in yeah. a religious hometown. Was it like pressures, or you I just... didn't know how I liked to dress. I didn't really know. Like I kind of honestly, I let my mom dress me most of the time. Like because I was just yeah. like I don't get it. I don't, I don't like clothes, I don't care about clothes. Yeah. I didn't have that much attachment to it. It was only once I came out as bi that I started mm -hmm. exploring kind of clothing that I liked in any form. So I felt like that gave me permission to then kind of yeah. play a bit more masculine, which is what that I kind sense. of attempted when I turned like 18, <laughs> went through like, mm -hmm. like party phase. We had like, this was a very, classic kind of look. Were you watching Jersey Shore? Absolutely I was. Is it? Oh, that's... Fuck yeah. That's concerning that that's where your mind this, went. <laughs> no, because this is the same way that my older sister was dressing in high school. Mm. And she was a huge Jersey Shore fan. Yeah. But honestly, all I have to say about that, like that's a green flag. If, like if somebody <laughs> didn't watch Jersey Shore, I don't trust them. This is a picture that I have seen of my older sister, literally this <laughs> as it is. She's not gay, she's very straight. I thought so too. I thought so too. So this was this was after you started dressing yourself or this was before? Before, so this is like probably fresh 18 and I'm still kind of just like, mom, whatever you think. <laughs> Mommy, mommy picked party outfit? <laughs> you got mommy picking a party outfit? I can't ever, after my video, I can't ever hear you say the word mommy. Yeah, I'm so sorry. At least I don't say daddy. Do you know any girls that call their dads daddy? Like, oh. like unironically. Like, honestly, probably. I can see it. The town I'm from, I can see it. Haven't heard it in real life, thank the Lord. You don't want to. My Praise older sister me. calls her dad daddy. It's really? awful. Mm -hmm. Wait, the internet has ruined I, everything wholesome. Everything, everything. And I, like every time she says it, me and my younger sister go, ooh. <laughs> I, before my dad knew I was gay, I don't know how he didn't know I was gay. Like I will roll up in jeans and a backwards baseball hat and like a t-shirt and be like, sup pop? Like, <laughs> come on, are you kidding me? And then you have my hyper feminine older sister like strutting in, hey daddy. <laughs> oh, that's kind of, you know, High school, Elena, boy crazy, right? I'm like, this is what the boys like. What can I wear right. that boys will like? Like that was gotcha. my whole headspace in picking anything <laughs> before we leave high school. So this is the photo that I think proves without a shadow of a doubt that I would have been a Hey Mama's lesbian. So I was, I did a lot of theater and one of the okay. school plays that I was in, I played a boy. I, Loved my costume so much. I would wear it around school to practice and I would act like a boy to practice. Yeah, yeah. Part of this like acting like a boy was hitting on my friends. Of course. To practice. <laughs> to practice. Well, you have to go, you know, take them to the bathroom and make out with them to practice because what if you need, <laughs> what if you need okay. to? This is a 
picture. I've cut out the other person. I'm literally looking down my friend's shirt. Stop! Like that's what's happening in this picture. Is me being like, I'm practicing for the school play. I'm being a boy. I'm sorry, the facial expression that you're making, you're like, you're looking down her shirt going, oh shit. <laughs> With this persona, just like, damn. Yep. Boobs. That, exactly. Oh. Is that not Hey Mama's whatever year? That would have been like 20, let's say 13. This? That's the, that's the 2013 version of Hey Mama's. This is way more Hey Mama's than anything I've ever done. This is what I'm telling you. Oh my you. god. If that would have been- You would have been. I would have been. I would have been a problem. I am like fully convinced that you would have been a viral TikTok Hey Mama's list. <laughs> that, Why? No, because this look- <laughs> Don't show it to like, me. If, <laughs> oh <my. laughs> This face, if you put a camera where her boobs were, yeah, and you like looked up and down, oh, that's God. a viral video oh, right there. Oh no, that's a viral fucking video right there. Listen, dare I say, kind of a hot pick. <laughs> no, you may not. You dare may not say. This picture, this picture has mommy written all over it. Stop. I will end this. I will end this what collab. I remember. I remember someone telling me after one of the the after one of the shows, th their little cousin had asked who the hot boy was. Up until that point in my life, I don't think I had ever felt such pure joy. Did you feel validated? Like I was like, this is like how many j jumping jacks or um, like gymnastics I did in my head. I, like I felt so validated, but I was like, because my acting is so good. I'm validated in my in the performance that I put on. Nothing to do with my sexuality at all. <laughs> then we enter the bi years. So this is interesting because I immediately got the bi bob. I also went through a bang phase, which was really unfortunate. I was trying to figure it out, okay? Chop my hair off, dyed it red, then got bangs and dyed it black. I was really trying to figure out, like this was me being like, how do I want to express myself? And getting yeah, it so absolutely. wrong. <laughs> so many people that follow me all the time are talking about that same thing that you just said. You know, they're trying to figure out how they want to express themselves, whether it's like a haircut or they want to start like trying to dress differently. And I mean, you you hit a lot of a I, lot of different uh, I, gender <laughs> expressions yes. and stuff. How did you? Do you have any advice for them as far as, you know, trying to find confidence to to find a new way to express themselves when yeah. they know they want to try things, but yes. they're afraid to try things because, you know, I mean, haircuts especially can be like scary. I mean, just from like a vain perspective, but I haircuts are kind of terrifying. Absolutely. Honestly, it was l the best thing that I did at the beginning not during these periods of time. Like this was me just like shot in the dark. Like I was like, I don't know, let me try. I need something, let me try all this different stuff. And that's why I was wrong so many times. <laughs> when I started to find the sweet spot, what I did was like when I would see on social media or like in a TV show or whatever, when I would see somebody and think they look cool, like I wanna look like mm -hmm. that, I would screenshot it or save the picture and like literally go and buy that exact outfit. Like not just be like, oh, this is my inspo. Like it would literally be like, I would see, cause when you, when someone, when you see someone and they register to you as like, they look cool, I wanna look like that. You're not yeah. identifying like, oh, look, they've got this kind of shirt and this kind of jacket and they have this kind of accessory and a hat and their backpack. Like you're not seeing all those individual pieces, it comes together and, and looks cool to you. So in mm -hmm. like screenshotting it, I would then reference those photos and try and do exactly what that person had done. Yeah. And lo and behold, I would put it on and I would feel cool, right? And then the more that you do that, the more that you start to figure out what it is that you actually like. That's awesome. I love that advice. And that's one thing we were kind of trashing TikTok earlier in the video we did on her page. But one thing I do love about that app is the ability to have access to so many different gender expressions yes. and so many different styles. And yes. you know, it's cool. like the videos are quick. And if it's somebody that you like, you can go look through all their stuff and like get outfit inspiration. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's super awesome for younger queer people, especially cause all we had before was like shitty TV shows. No, I avoided queer media like the plague. Like I was almost scared really? of it. I wouldn't. 
until I like re-came out, I wouldn't watch. I'd set off alarm bells in my head. Yeah. You know, like oh, I wanted it, like... it too bad. And so I yeah. I just like shut it down. But I guess I guess what I'm saying is like don't be afraid to copy somebody. Like mm -hmm. we talk a lot about I feel like the idea of inspiration that it almost implies that you need to like take something and make it your own. If you're just getting started and trying to figure out what you like, like literally copy someone that you think is cool. Absolutely. It's going to be unique because it's on your body and not theirs. Like that's yeah. It's your, it's inherently making it your own. Um yeah. I love that. So I would say don't be I afraid to like literally copy someone. If you think that their yeah. their look is is neat, that's great advice. I love that. This first one I'm looking at is you in front of a lake. Okay, so in that's in shorts and a tank top. That was my next phase. Was like high waisted shorts, tuck and something mm -hmm. tucked in, and that was kind of my. And then I'd like I I kind of discovered flannels. I went through a big flannel phase, yeah. and that was my way of finding that like middle ground between. I still very much had it in my head that like. I wanted men to be attracted to me. Like I still mm -hmm. was trying to find that like that line between where I wanted to dress but also feeling a attractive to men. Uh, and so interesting. shorts and like some sort of tank top or t-shirt um, was kind of the go-to. People know that you're queer but like you're still kind of safe. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm starting to figure it out. This next picture I found, and this one cracks me up because the ones that I just sent you before, that was how I dressed mm -hmm. like day to day. And then I would go to these YouTube events where I would be away from my partner and I would just mm -hmm. be kind of like me surrounded by a lot of, basically the only queer people that I knew were people from yeah. YouTube at the time. And so a few times a year, I would get to like be around queer people. And then this is how I would dress. And this is how I would be like, I feel confident, I feel like myself, but I would never dress like that in my yeah. real life. And I look back and I'm like, oh, Lena. You just wanted to, you needed to gay out a little bit. Like, it's, you needed the pendulum to like swing really <laughs> far over the other way to just kind of equalize everything. Yeah. When I first came out and I would go back over to my parents and visit, I would kind of do something similar where I would dress not femininely, but more neutral. Yeah. Like now I dress pretty masculinely and like I wear my Hey Mama's chain and everything. <laughs> and I would do something similar where when I would go see my parents, I would kind of try to like neutralize it so that it was, it felt very safe and it felt very, yes. no one can come in my bubble and talk to me about being gay type thing. But I think you needed this. I think you needed this. I really did. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying about like when the pandemic hit, that's what was taken away was like mm -hmm. those times where I did get to go out and be in queer spaces and kind of like yeah. feed that side of me. Turns uh -huh. out it was the whole of me. But at the time I thought that it was just like a part of my life. And then yeah. that part being taken away was so much more suffocating than I would have expected. It's also interesting though, because a lot of people there's this trope that people became way more gay during the pandemic. Like, mm -hmm. so a lot of people stuck inside and just stuck with their thoughts and stuck with social media and then TikTok blew up. And I know we were joking about it, but like being gay on TikTok is very trendy. <laughs> like it's that, a, it's a big thing. That's how I realized. And a lot of people are seeing that. Yeah. And I mean, I would say, God, probably like half my comments on TikTok are like, I'm straight, but like I'm questioning now and like blah, blah, blah. It's like I this see huge that thing. so much. How did you feel confidence wise when you were dressing like this? Was it something like I know you said you were still trying to kind of stay in that safe zone. Were you like comfortable dressing this way or? I think because I had never really found clothes that made me feel super comfortable. Like I hadn't had the experience of being like, oh, this feels right. It's not that I ever felt like actively uncomfortable. Like I felt fine. Yeah. It wasn't a thing, um, but I, there was like a disconnect. It was just kind of yeah. like, I don't really care that much. Like I'm, I'm kind of trying, Absolutely. but like, I don't really care. Now that I've found clothes that I really like, I can put something on and be like, oh no, this does not. Yeah, this is not work. Absolutely, clothes make a huge difference. Hundred percent. I don't think people realize really a lot of the time how much of a difference clothing can make. Because I dressed not hyper feminine in high school, but more feminine. Mm -hmm. And the difference in like my confidence now versus then 
It's crazy how much of a difference clothing can make. And I mean, even you just talking about how you didn't even realize until you tried on clothing yeah. that like made you feel really good. Yeah. That's, oh, it's so important to experiment, you guys. Like if you see something that you think looks swaggy, they're not gonna do it now because I said Whoop. swaggy. You said, <laughs> that looks You're what? <laughs> You're getting my worst vocabulary today, I hope you know. I don't know I why. It. Mommy, daddy, uh, swaggy. Stop saying mommy. I don't. You I swear to God. When you look at mommy Elena, count, I can't I'm like, stop. how many times have you said mommy? Um, I'm gonna get a sound for it and just have a mommy button. <laughs> but, um, like you said, experimenting with clothes, that's one of the great things about clothes. And I used to say this about makeup too. Like, you can take them off. Like, there's literally no harm in experimenting yes. with your clothing, with your makeup, and trying different things. If you don't like it, you just take it off, you know? Like, you can go into a store, even if you don't want to buy anything or you're not planning on buying anything, just go try a bunch of stuff on, see how it feels. Absolutely. There's literally no That's harm. That's great advice. So, then this one, so this is like, let's say a month, two months maybe after oh I God, like- Oh my God, cute! After I like came out, came out. So this was like uh -huh. everything, like, yeah. I was out, my whole life was just turned upside down, but like now I'm start, yeah, I'm starting this chapter of like being the most myself that I've ever been. So during that time period, obviously that's super traumatic and really just emotionally turbulent for you. Mm -hmm. Did you feel like you had some kind of weight lifted off your chest? Or oh were my you God. just so caught in yeah. the trauma? Yeah. No, it was like, wow. that was the that was the bizarre thing. It was like, it was the saddest, most heartbreaking, most terrifying, most uncertain that I've ever felt while also feeling the, the freest that I'd ever felt. Like yeah. also feeling this incredible weight lifted off of my chest like it's hard to explain like I my whole this so this was I was 20 I had just turned yeah mm -hmm. I had just turned 27 and I my whole life there had been this I, but I didn't realize it this is what's hard to explain is like until that little voice was gone I didn't even realize that there had been I had been convincing myself my entire life I'd been convincing myself that I was happy mm -hmm. and that this was what I wanted and this was who I was and like, so whether it's clothes, whether it was the direction my life was going, like I got so good at being like, this is fine. Until that was gone, it was like yeah. I didn't even realize the kind of weight that I'd been carrying. Yeah, it's like normal, feeling normal became your feeling good until you realized what totally. feeling good actually felt Exactly, like. exactly. Okay, so then, and now here's a, here's my last three that I'm gonna send you. These are over the last year. Um, some times that I really was like feeling myself. This is my favorite part of the videos. These are three pictures I really like. And this is kind of me figuring out, yes. like feeling myself, feeling good. I love that shirt. That's awesome. So how would you describe if you could use like, let's just say if you could use three words to describe your current fashion sense, gender expression, what would you, what would you choose? What a question. It's hard because I still really do like dressing up. Like I still uh -huh. can go feminine and feel like I'm killing it. You know, like it's not, yeah. but in my day to day, I like to kind of sit somewhere in the middle. Like I have long hair, I wear a bit of makeup. I don't know, I definitely would say I fit somewhere in the middle, generally, of the spectrum. Um, but maybe I probably lean a bit more feminine, but then I like my, I feel like I'm also a fairly assertive person. So I- Got you. Even if I'm dressed f super feminine, I'm in charge. I didn't, I mean, I didn't even ask that question last time I did this video. I was just curious, so it doesn't no, matter. No, that's a great question. I've just uh, never thought about. I like to find a balance between masculine and feminine. The more comfortable that I became in my queerness, the less weight I felt in terms of my presentation. Like, I think at first I was gotcha. like, okay, well now I want to dress more masculine because I want people to know mm -hmm. that I'm gay. I want to, I want to present yeah. Like, I wanna be very queer coded. And then now that I'm finding a lot more comfort in my, my own identity, like, I understand my queerness. I validate my own queerness. It's like, mm -hmm. I'm starting to also remember that like, 
No, sometimes I want to dress super feminine and I still feel like a badass. Yeah. I think that's a problem that a lot of femme women that I know that are queer deal with mm -hmm. is just they want other queer people to recognize them and validate them. Yeah. But you know, we have all these stereotypes that that's not what queer people look like. And I think that's changing a lot, which is awesome, mm -hmm. but they still have to deal with it. And I love the idea that even if you want to present super masculine one day, you can present super feminine the next day. Exactly. And it's like the top and bottom thing. Like, do whatever, do whatever do what feels, feels good, good. in that moment. Yeah. Okay, what do about what you feels though? Good. What would you now, in your expression and stuff, would you ever go super feminine? Or is that just kind of not something that makes you feel good? Uh, yeah, I definitely wouldn't. It just, I've never felt comfortable in feminine clothing. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, I like having, I like having a more masculine appearance and I'm also like very attracted to femininity. So right. I think if I really wanted to like psychoanalyze myself right now, I would say it has something to do with my dad raising me, I grew up in a very religious household as well. Mm -hmm. And so my dad raising me with like very uh, religious views and wanting me and my sisters to uh, whoever we ended up with be in a very like heteronormative relationship, traditional roles, masculine, feminine. And I think because I was gay, I wanted to still somehow like please my dad in a way. So I was like, okay, if I'm gonna be gay, at least then let me be masculine and let this the girl that I'm with be feminine so we're still heteronormative. Right, yes. But it's just which is so fucking twisty, but it's not if twisty. I had it's to... it's another it's another way of like trying to feel safe. Like you're like I'm yeah, going to exactly. I'm a queer woman, a queer person and I'm going to live that truth. But in the safest way like but how can I still right. fit into these these prescribed right. boxes. Uh -huh. Like, let me make this so that other people can recognize it and still see it yeah. and be like, oh, that's a couple, like there's masculine and feminine. Yeah. But yeah, I would definitely, I don't, I could not see myself in femme clothing. When I, when I started dressing the way that I really wanted to dress, my confidence was like, it never went back. It's like, people ask me all the time about confidence and if you don't honor things that make you feel good yes. and things that make you feel bad, you're never gonna get to that point. And mm -hmm. after you do get to that point, you will never ever wanna go back. Well see, like, and that's why I'm so curious, good. now that you've found that confidence and you've found that comfort, I'm curious if you could rock a dress, you know, like. <laughs> you're like, I absolutely think, not. <laughs> I think, and that's okay too. You know, that's okay I think, too. Okay, this is interesting. I think part of the reason that I don't think that I could is because when I think of a dress, I think of a hyper feminine woman wearing, and this is like probably my own shit that I have projecting, but I think of a very hyper feminine woman with very feminine mannerisms wearing a dress yeah. and doing that. And so I'm like, if you take me, a masculine person, and put me in a dress, I'm not gonna look feminine because I don't have feminine, uh, tendencies, I don't have feminine mannerisms, but that's not to say like, you should be able to wear a dress and not have to look feminine and act feminine in totally. it. Totally. And it be okay and it work, uh -huh. but like that's, <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that's super interesting. Oh my God, huh. next video. Really dove into it. We have way too much to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you wanna check out Elena's channel, she will be linked down in the description. Make sure you watch the video that I did with her, mm -hmm. despite how embarrassing it was for me. You should still <laughs> You saw the pictures I just sent you. We're I'm still, even. I'm still giving you that plug. <laughs> We're despite even. Despite everything. <laughs> okay, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys next Sunday. Have a great rest of your week. Peace. Bye.